All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Culture Cooks, uh, another episode. I'm not Esther, but today we're gonna be making hot sauce uh, or some sort of hot thing. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about anger. I figured what better thing to talk about while handling these hot peppers than having a hot head. Uh, so we're gonna dive into this. I'll put the recipe on the bottom of the screen, but mostly just talk through some scripture while we do this. So let's see what happens. So everyone struggles with anger. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 has some good news for us where it tells us that in your anger do not sin. So in other words, the Bible knows that anger is something that we'll all deal with and yet it tells us that it's something uh, to be expected. It's not inherently sinful. It's not naturally sinful to be angry. It's an emotion created by our creator. And yet it's how we handle that anger that can get us into trouble. So if we're not supposed to sin in our anger, what, what does scripture give us? What are some of the options on how we deal with our anger? There's several options on how to deal with our anger given to us in scripture, but particularly in Proverbs, we have the hot tempered quick response uh, of anger. So you're angered and you just kind of blow up. And then we have the calm, more patient response. And obviously it's gonna lean towards the calm and patient, but why, why is that so? Proverbs chapter 29 verse 22 says, an angry man stirs up dissension and a hot tempered man commits many sins. What this proverb is showing us is that uh, to, to act in anger immediately, like to pow, hot temper right away, it usually makes more problems than we had in the first place. It actually makes things worse. A quick answer usually shows you to be foolish and we'll look at that here in a second as I add some pepper uh, to this thing here. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15 through 17 says, A simple man believes anything, but a prudent man gives thought to his steps. A wise man fears the Lord and shuns evil, but a fool is hot-headed and reckless. A quick-tempered man does foolish things, and a crafty man is hated. Short interruption, we had to cook dinner, but we're back and we're trying to finish this sauce. And so it talks about a fool believing anything, and it doesn't mean by that that they're gullible. They don't believe that the sky is pink if you tell them that. And what it means is if you tell them something negative about another person, they're quick to believe it. They believe the worst about those around them, and that leads them to have problems and leads them to have issues. And so we don't want to be like that hot-headed person. The response of, of a quick response to anger is not seen as a positive, it's seen as foolishness. Is there another way? The other way that we see in the Proverbs is the way of calm, patient response when someone angers you. Proverbs 16 verse 32 tells us that better a patient man than a warrior, a man who controls his temper than one who takes a city. We think that being able to be angry and kind of bold and strong is really the strongest thing you can be. If someone takes you off, you gotta show them how strong you are back. But what scripture tells us here in Proverbs is that there's more strength in being patient when you're wronged than there is in, in responding with this big angry explosion. Your patient response is actually going to get you further and show more strength in the end than being able to go ah really fast and really loud. How is it possible? How is it possible that that actually is more strength? How is it possible that being patient when wronged could actually be something of strength? Proverbs 17 tells us this, that a man of knowledge uses words with restraint, and a man of understanding is even-tempered. It says even a fool is thought wise if he keeps silent, and discerning if he holds his tongue. It's telling us that the reason that patience and a calm response when someone makes you angry is better than showing a lot of strength and aggression is because it slows you down enough to figure out what's really going on so that you can figure out how to handle things best. It tells us that a hot tempered man stirs up dissension. Again, the idea of making problems and making arguments and making things bad. Uh, but it says a patient man calms a quarrel. That's Proverbs 15, 18. If you can be calm when you're mad, you can actually calm other people down too. You can solve situations, you can make things better. The question might be, what if the angry person is actually me? What if I'm the problem? What can I do 
to handle my anger well. Well, let me give you four things that can possibly help you out with that. First of all, number one, change environments. Change environments. Proverbs chapter 22 says, don't make friends with a hot-tempered man. Do not associate with one easily angered or you may learn his ways. That means that who you hang out with will actually affect you. I know we get told that all the time. Who you hang out with is gonna become who you are, but it's true. Look, if all these ingredients never hang out with the jalapeno peppers, they'll never be hot. But if they start hanging out with some jalapeno peppers like it's about to go down in here, they're gonna get some heat to them, okay? And, and so the idea here is if your friends are consistently angry, consistently judgmental, consistently wanting to bang and fight, you might need to get some new friends. The second thing is to believe that you have options. We naturally think if someone offends us that my only real choice is to fight back, is to show other people that I've been disrespected, I'm not gonna take it. That someone's called me out of my name and I'm not gonna take that, I'm gonna fight back. But we actually have options. You don't actually show yourself stronger if you just respond in anger. It ultimately shows you that you're weak, that you're foolish, that you can't handle a little bit of somebody saying something on your name, right? There's a reason people pull out their cameras when someone gets really angry and loses their cool because we all know that somebody's about to do something foolish. Don't be that foolish person. The third thing is if you're gonna believe you have options, you have to figure out what those options are. So number three, get some perspective. Get yourself some perspective. Step back from the situation. You're gonna to have to slow down. You're gonna to have to listen. Figure out what's going on and make the best choice that is available. This is big for avoiding misunderstandings so that you can actually slow down and not be too quick to believe the worst, but figure out where people are really coming from before you decide what to do. Next, maybe pray. Prayer is huge. If you can slow down and pray, now I don't mean if someone's like punching you in the face, like psh, Lord, psh, help me psh, to forgive this person. I'm talking about at least just being like, God help. In the middle of a situation that's stressful, slow down and listen to God and see what he might have to say. Once you're doing that, now you have the option to get the bigger picture. If something's really making you mad and you want to respond poorly, ask yourself, will this matter in five days? Will this matter in five minutes? Will this matter at all in the future? And if it won't, figure out if there's a better way to handle it than causing yourself more pain in the immediate. Then you gotta ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? Is my significance and what these other people are saying about me or how they're making me feel, or is it deeper than that? As a Christian, our significance is meant to be found in Christ. And if my significance can be found in Jesus, then I have a lot of options. That brings us to our last option, which is look to Jesus. We look to Jesus because in 2 Peter, it tells us that Jesus was one person more than anyone who understood and who experienced what it meant like to be angry for the right reasons and yet handled it perfectly. When Jesus was on the cross, when, well, when he was being led to the cross, he was beaten, he was called names, people were calling him out on his name, lying about him, and it says that he never retaliated. He never spoke back because he had perspective. He knew that God had a plan and that in God's plan, his goal was to make it to the cross. And more than that, he had a deeper perspective. We were his perspective. He knew that his death on the cross would bring us new life and bring us forgiveness. And so if we're trying to fight our anger to practice a better response in the midst of that, the call is to look to Jesus and recognize that if I'm a Christian, I'm a new creation in Christ. I am secure in who I am in Jesus. Even if someone else calls me out on my name or makes me feel dumb or foolish or whatever, or makes me angry, I'm secure because the heavenly father looks at me and calls me his son because of Jesus. I can slow down. I can change my environment. I can realize there's options. I can get perspective. I can look to Jesus and I can respond well when I'm angry. You don't have to be stupid. You don't have to be a fool. We can practice wisdom even when we're upset. That's good. That's good. Come here, Sire. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. It's limey. Very limey. Mm.